Hi everyone, today I want to show you some useful things you can do in JavaScript. So the first thing that I want to show you is using the spread operator to create a copy of an array. So the spread operator is the dot 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 that you see right here before array. Um, and how you can create a copy of an array is you can use the square braces dot 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 and then the array variable name. So basically what that does is it expands the array into its individual elements and because you've got inside the square brackets it's creating a copy of the array. So I'll just show you what console logs now. There you go, you can see it's created a new array with the elements 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I want to show you generating a random number within a range. So I find that whatever programming language I'm using I always find a need at some point to generate a random number in a range. So I find it have, handy to have that sort of function locked down in my memory so I don't need to google it every time. Um, so this one will take a min and a maximum and generate a number inclusive of that. So I can show you this here now. And you can see it will generate numbers from 1 to 10. Another thing that's quite cool in JavaScript is that you can copy text to the clipboard. So say you have a phone number or a bank account number inside something, you might want an easy button to copy that to the clipboard because you know it's something that's commonly getting shared. So for this example, I've created a phone number and if I click on my copy phone number, it should copy it to the clipboard. Then if I go paste, there you go, you can see that it successfully copied that text to the clipboard. And this is the code to do it here, it's pretty simple. Um, basically, navigator.clipboard.write text and then you can specify whatever text you want to put on the clipboard. So another thing that you can do is get the selected text on a page. So if I were to go ahead and highlight some of this and then click get selected text, you can see that it's um, logging the selected text to the console. So how you do that is you get the selected text by going window.getSelection.toString and I've console logged that but you could do what it, whatever you want with it. This is another one using the spread operator um, which I found quite useful. So this is using the spread operator to merge different objects. So say you've got a person and a job. Um, I'll just comment this out so they'll rerun. Cool. So say you've got a person Billy Bob, born the 10th of the 10th, 1995, in city Houston. If I logged that out, I'd get that object, which I've just created. Same for job. So there's my job object. But you can do this thing with the spread operator to merge two objects together. So you, you create the object with the curly braces, and you do the spread operator to include the properties of the objects. So this one should have the properties from person and job. So you can see it's got the properties from person and the properties from job. The second, um, the city has um, is a property that's in both objects and it's taken the value from the second specified um, object by the spread operator. So basically it's gone ahead, it's added all the person 
uh, properties to the object and then after that it's gone ahead and added all the job objects job properties to the object and it's updated any where the properties already existed so that's why you see city is Austin which comes from the job you can see the converse if I put job first then person you can see that the city is Houston now because um, person is being put second and it goes through and updates the city to Houston. Another one which everyone needs to know is console um, is the array for each. So what I've done is I've console logged every element of the array times its index plus one. So basically I am squaring the objects. So I've got 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and 5 times 5, and that's just because I've set up these values here. If I wanted to change this one, I'd get 6 times 5, which would be 30. And you can see that there. Basically, for each allows you to easily iterate through the elements of an array, um, and you can you can leave it as just the element but if you by going like that but index is often useful and so if you need index you can add it in there as well another um, javascript operator which is quite useful is the question mark dot operator which is the optional chaining um, so basically if i have an object that's undefined if I try to console log a property of that object, it's going to give me an error. So error cannot read properties of undefined. But if I used um, optional chaining, then it will try to get the value of the object. So it's tried to get the value of the object, which is undefined. Um, and then it's found that it's undefined, so it hasn't continued through this um, statement, it just returns undefined when it encounters it. So it's re returned undefined here and logged it to that console. Now if I define my object, um, I can use either the dot operator or the question dot operator. It doesn't matter because the object's defined, but if you're not sure if it's going to be defined, you can use this optional chaining. So that's quite useful in quite a few different scenarios as you'd imagine. Another one which I really like is template literals. So that allows you to have multi-line multi strings. So I'll just show you this one here. So because I'm using this little back tick character instead of a single quote or a double quote, it's allowing me to create multi-line strings without the need to put in any sort of um, line breaks. And also what you can use it for is string interp interpolation. So um, what that is, is I've defined a variable name and I want a console log high variable. Um, so you use this dollar curly brace and the variable name inside that and you can get the um, value of the variable replacing this. So here I can see hi Harry and Harry is the value of my name variable. You can also use it to do calculations so you can do expressions inside this. Um, so here's I've got here I've set up a value for A and B and I've calculated them and they get substituted in so I can see count five. So it makes your um, strings a little bit easier to read when you're combining multiple things. So I quite like this one. And another one that's quite cool is that you can actually um, actually define multiple uh, define and assign multiple variables at once in JavaScript so how you do that is use these square brackets with the variable names so name city phone 
and then you do the square brackets again and you provide your values for the variables. So my name, Chelsea, city, Auckland, phone, 555, 5556. And then you can log it so you can see that I can access these variables individually by, by name, city or phone. Or I can even um, log multiple variables at once using the um, comma between them when I'm logging. So name, city, phone. And you can see it logs all the different variables that I've defined previously. And finally, another useful one that I find is quite helpful is um, redirect. So with a redirect, it's pretty simple. Um, you just set the location.href value. So here I've created a button that when it's clicked, it will call this redirect um, and redirect me to this page here. So I'll show you that now. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed all my tips for JavaScript today. If you've enjoyed it, let me know, like and subscribe, and if you have anything you want to learn, just let me know in the comments.